Okay, you are investigating the Minister of Health and yes. uh, going to different health centers. Mm. Could you maybe share with us uh, uh, the preliminary findings that you got? Yes, we do one of the methods that we employ are spot checks. So without invitation, without prompting, we just happen at a government institution and check out their efficiency, effectiveness and quality of services. And uh, one of the things that we did, we checked out about 40 uh, public health facilities, from hospitals to health centers, about 40 of them. And the story is very, very sad because from absenteeism to stealing of drugs to extortion to refusing to give people um, services unless they pay for the services up to the point of letting some selling blood you know where was that the revelations were that I think it was a hospital in the in my UK or somewhere in eastern Uganda my, where we found a, a little baby who needed blood but the doctors would not work on the baby unless they paid for blood but the blood was there you know but when my colleague um, who was investigating that area went to the store found the blood there and said but why didn't you put the blood on this kid they put it there on the kid. For example, you visited for the hospitals, and the situation is quite alarming. With it's a, quite as alarming. What you found yes, out. That's why. So, uh, what did you do about it? Um, normally, in a situation like that, we invite uh, the players in the, in the sector. In this case, and in other cases, the regulators. The regulators which includes the um, National Drug Authority, which might include uh, the Medical Association, Doctors and Dentist Association. Mm. How many people have you arrested? I cannot tell you offhand, mainly because our judicial system requires evidence beyond reasonable doubt. So if a patient says, this one asked for me for money, you need evidence, you know, and the evidence, you know, it's very frustrating. You are having an investigation into uh, property owners, especially those who sell condominiums. Mm. And you, in fact, you held a meeting at your office mm. one time. Mm. What did you find out? We found out, indeed, that people get occupation permits when the building is not fit for occupation. So, we are taking it up with the regulators who give occupation permits. We find that we found that actually the public are not protected. Those uh, developers, they buy or lease land. They lease land and they make a plan and they sell you a plan. They're very good salespeople. Eventually, after several months, they give you a house. Then. That's the public outcry on the quality of the products that is being. Are there some that you you intend to blacklist? Are there some you intend to? Yeah, absolutely. We're working with the regulators uh, and um, the homeowners. They are called homeowners. They are putting together evidence, and we we'll work with that. Okay. We're checking out a lot of things too, whether they even have proper work permits, whether they even have. Uh, qualified engineers. You know, here in Uganda, anybody who can put a brick on top of a brick, they call him an engineer. So if somebody comes and says, uh, I'm an engineer, they give him a job. That's why we're having so many buildings collapsing and so many buildings uh, catching fire. Because everybody goes with the title of engineer, they give, them, uh, they give them jobs. What should the public expect from you moving forward? Moving forward, I think that we shall bring, uh, of course it's going to be a long journey, but it is doable. 
but the journey will not be fought by the inspector of government alone. It will be fought by all Ugandans. Thank you so much for rendering us your time. Thank you for having me on the show.